today I just got loaded up with manure we got I don't know maybe five foot or so left maybe a little more than that here in the lagoon it is December 1st we got done shelling corn here last night Tim had a few things to do here this morning and um, we're gonna run this for a little while I don't know if I've got to run it all day or not but it has been quite a while since I've hauled any manure usually I am on other tasks so it's me and Jared and Sarge uh, hauling out of the lagoon here and Garrett will be um, running the crawler here in a little while. Well, we're pulling up to the field with our first load here. This is where they got the spreader stuck the other day. So this is the same farm. And we have a little pull-off here where we'll pull up and offload right into the frack tank. Nate is just getting here. And uh, Jared has already dumped the load in uh, the frack tank. So his 8,000 plus my 8,000 will be 16,000 gallons in the frack tank. So these Diller tanks have this little remote here, so we'll power the remote on. We might as well get out. We'll show you how this process works here. Alright, so we'll lift this boom up out of the tank. I had to position the trailer a little better here. So that uh, I could get the damn boom over into the frack tank itself. Nate has backed in. He is getting ready to uh, load. Now we have our pipe swung over into the tank, and now we'll just go and start unloading. there it's a nice mess here huh he needs a walkway he should have some planks set up what a mess oh well he's checking his oil we do have a remote that we can use leave the PTO running and then um, run the remote to load the uh, tanker, but it ends up wearing the pump out if you leave the um, if you leave the uh, pump going. So we just the guy gets out, loads himself, and then gets back in. So he's backed in underneath it, and he's going to start or loading himself. This job consists of more or less. How full is that? Half full. Okay, we do have a gauge on the side there, but that doesn't start coming into it until it gets almost full. into the day and we're having to offload the green trailer onto the red one Jared has a flat tire and 
what appears to be a wheel bearing problem. So we're just making sure that we're not going to overflow that one, which we shouldn't. They're both the same size tanks. But what he has wrong is he has a flat outside tire and it appears to be that the wheel bearing is shot. So we're gonna get this offloaded, take these tires off, and then we can just run it back to the shop like it is. Uh, it'll, this wheel position here, or this axle will stay off the ground. You won't have to um, put any, have any tires on there or anything. It, it won't dig into the road. We've done it before. So uh, we are almost loaded here. And we'll take this one to the field with the red trailer i'll have to turn around because i'm headed the wrong way so fun stuff right bob and jared is empty well we are stopping in to give jared a hand here he um got the army truck here and what he's doing is he is taking the tires off this one side he's probably already got them off of here yep he's got them off already and uh, he's gonna get this back to the farm pull this wheel assembly apart and um, Put some new bearings in there. Tire's got a hole in the sidewall. Hole in the sidewall? That's why it was a full air this morning and flat now. Yeah. So um the best thing to do would be to just we'll use that new hub and we can put races and whatever in this hub after the fact. Um probably should pull that drum off, yeah. Because it'll fall out. Well, the other, well, I was going to say, if it's too hot, just put a couple of nuts on there. So, um, the bearing seized up, but at least everything is still intact. We're just hoping that the bearing didn't weld itself to the hub and then slip on that axle a couple of times. How hot is that? It's not hot. It's been about an hour, so um sarah's gonna ride back with me and grab this truck so okay all right let's position them Maybe one we, we put one there and one up in the back yeah well we're not sure if it did have a stone that made its way in between the duels or not there does seem to be a mark right here but it's hard to tell could just be that that tire is expired so we'll go ahead and get the trailer back to the shop oh these were virgin rubber too uh aren't they no they're i don't know all right so we're gonna get this trailer back to the shop and Work on this hub here. They get this bottle jack out from underneath it. See if we can catch him.
trouble catching him. He is gone. <laughs> I got it right to the wood. him up a couple of these hills, but we gotta catch him first. Ah, here he is up here. me to bring that army truck home. Tim is just loading here now. And, uh, I don't know if I can get going again here. A little slickery. <laughs> oh, boy. So we'll back in and get her loaded again. Touch base for the end a little while here once we learn of uh, once we learn a few things. Hopefully it didn't hurt that spindle or an axle on the trailer. Sometimes you can have a bearing go and it'll get hot and it'll stick to the it'll weld itself to the race. And then when it once it welds itself to the race, then uh, the hub will end up spinning the bearing on the spindle and uh, it can run into a problem where it ends up screwing up the actual spindle slash axle. 
So we're gonna go ahead and get loaded. So we'll load up again. Same procedure as when we started. However, Garrett's down in here with a crawler. So let's get this pump in and we can take a glance at the crawler here. the crawler just working it back and forth you can see the gun off of the left hand side there which that is the front of the crawler he can move that gun up and down and then there's a couple of guns that are down in the manure on this back side here you can kind of see him moving the gun up and down and the guns that are on the back side they're on like a Y, they're shaped like a Y, there's two of them. And those guns can propel it uh, forward and backwards, and then there's guns on the side that move it sideways or spin it clockwise or counterclockwise. So basically you want to kind of just move along real slow with it, and what he's doing is mixing the sand and the manure in with the water. The lighter material is obviously going to be on top and the solids and the sand is going to sink to the bottom. We need to agitate that so that we don't have all the solids left on the bottom floor of the lagoon. So maybe the next load will show you the noon pump that's sitting on the other side of that truck over there. Uh, that's a pump that goes over the wall and we'll show you that here. Next load, uh, I wish we had that set up here and pulled it out of the pond here the other day so that uh, they could try it in one of the barn pits. And we had that set up right here, hooked to this play flat hose and loading trucks with the uh, load cart. So we are almost loaded. All right, Sarah is with us here now. You want to say hello to everybody? Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. How about hello, folks? Hello, folks. Yeah. Uh, she's got to take the army truck back and uh, give Jared a hand. Getting that wheel uh, put back on there. Um, are you all excited to be done with corn? Not really. Not really? You're disappointed yeah. that we're done? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was kind of one of them things you get into a habit and everything just kind of rolls along. And um, it's the same thing day in and day out. So uh, we obviously have a bunch of equipment to clean up now. And we're blessed with some warmer weather here. Uh, my nephew might take my spot here in a little while. We're actually going to move the combine and the grain buggy home. Um, from the last field that we did here last night. And then we could start the washing process. You're probably not looking forward to that, are you? No? I need to find a gear here. There we go. I need one of them auto shifters, you know? Yeah, you do. Yeah. It makes it easier to uh, do the, the videoing. You know, I've got one hand on the camera, one hand on the wheel, and I got nothing to nothing to shift with so uh, we'll join back up with you in a while here hopefully there's no more excitement I didn't think that we were gonna have a wheel bearing go today but Jared had called me and he says uh, you gotta offload this load I got a wheel prop I said I'll be right there I was on my way back through and we shuttled the load over or switched the load transferred the load over and uh, well, we'll join up with you in a while here. All right, we're over here with Garrett. He um, is controlling this crawler. And what he has is a uh, handheld remote. We've videoed this before. The newer crawler has a um, has GPS on it. And you can actually set it up to move as, at a specific speed and work inside of a grid if you will 
but Garrett has to control everything uh, from this controller. He can move that gun up and down. Pick that gun up in the air as far as you dare. <laughs> He's got to be careful not to pick it up too far because it blows at about 100 feet. Well, actually, it's not blowing at 100 feet. It's only blowing at about 50, but this manure is pretty, uh, pretty thick and heavy. And he can also go in one circle, uh, go in one direction or the other. Yeah. Uh, what that has is four guns on it and what it'll do is it'll open up a gun on one side or two two guns on the other side and it's allowing that to shift to the left you can open up ones on either corner to either go in a clock a circle clockwise or counterclockwise well we'll leave you alone I gotta get back to work here as long as we're over here we'll look at this manure pump Jared bought this in the spring and uh, this goes over the wall um, at some point in time we'll have this set up again but you can just back this up right up to the wall tip it down and then you can drop it down into the manure this pump is a lot better for the size or for the style lagoon uh, that we have we have had trouble with uh, that style pump that we have because of uh, the only way you could put it in the lagoon you have to go over the wall and then back the wheels down in and we have have had trouble getting the wheels to back through the sand and that has taken up a lot of space inside the lagoon when that other pump is in here it's tucked right up next to the wall and the guys can get around real good with the crawler without having to worry about the end where they don't have to worry about where the end of that particular pump is there so we better get to the field with this load of manure we're agitating the wall is sitting here just so that we can keep everything off the floor of the tanker. So here is what we're doing. Uh, we had a bad tire, and we're going to go ahead and put two new tires on just so that we have a matching pair. And then the um, we'll have a used tire to put on another position. So we got the bearing cut off of the hub here, or the axle itself. And uh, here is the hub. The inside bearing went and it has welded itself right to uh, the, the inner race in the hub. We have a new hub uh, over on the bench over there and my cheetah is now full of air. So we're gonna go ahead and shut that off. But uh, we're gonna have him up and rolling here. Uh, the brother took my spot. I blew a tire on the lift axle here a little bit ago, and we're currently running without the lift axle on uh, the red trailer. Now this is a spare that we had. Actually, it was a takeoff, and this has got some tread missing out of it. Tim took this off of the uh, red diller um, a while ago, so we've got a that's why we're switching that tire you might say oh there's enough tread on that well it's got tread missing so you got more missing on that side mm -hmm. yeah so yeah so he'll get this dismounted and we'll throw a new tire on that rim there and this one is, should be about aired up but we've got a new hub 
on the bench that we're going to use just so that we could speed this process up a little bit um, and then we'll knock the races out of that old hub there get some new races pounded pounded into it and have that on the shelf for another day right yep. we've got combine to get out of the field yet mm -hmm. and grain buggy yet to get but this is uh priority one to get this tanker back up and going here so i need to get a uh tire pressure gauge and check this tire here well we've got our new hub um installed and the nut that we're using on this um it's a um, octagon nut. It's not a hex nut. So we've got a eight, uh, an eight position uh, socket here, and someone has used that for pounding a seal in or something, and they have um, pounded the end over. So we're going to jam that on there, torque it down tight, back it off, roll it, do all that stuff with it we've got grease on the inner bearing oil on the outer bearing and then what we'll do is we'll put the uh, hub cap assembly on there and then we will um, oil the hub get our brake drum on throw the wheels on and then this job will be done right Sarah yeah. are you learning today you're learning, huh? You're learning. All right, so we've had kind of somewhat of a. What do you got? You should put Richard's Peterbilt on Alright, that should be seated. Now back it off some and uh, back it right off. Get it to where it's hand tight. Alright. Now put it just a, about a quarter of a turn. There. How's that? There you go. All right, so we'll get our lock ring on there. And then we'll uh, get oil, put the hub on and the oil and then the brake drum. Well, we've got the wheels on and just loading it with oil here for not the last time, but um, he'll have to check it here uh, after he makes his first trip because that oil is working its way past that outer bearing now we've got the old hub on the bench which i am not convinced yet that it doesn't need replaced but we're going to have to take this uh inner race out and it is all just this might have got so hot that it might have uh it might have ruined the hub but you can see the uh, varnish or whatever from the bearings are just melted right to this inner race here we've got part of the cage here is all it's welded itself more or less to the to the race so we'll run a beta weld around the inside of this let that shrink down and pound it out but it might have welded itself right to the hub and if that's the case this hub isn't going to be any good but um we need to uh get that ready so it can ride another day right sarah yeah. never know if we run into a situation like this we don't want to have to have you have to run for parts right away you know we want to pull everything off the shelf and go 
So that's going to do it for this video. If I keep the camera out any longer, I think we're going to end up having another breakdown. So this video has got to be about long enough. And we're going to go ahead and uh, sign off. So this is the uh, bearing itself, and that was seized to the axle pretty good. Um, so she rides again. Take it easy, folks. And, huh? Folks, yeah. All right, take it easy. Catch you at the next one.